In this video, we're going to start working on a very basic HUD. Now this HUD is going to control some simple things, and for right now, all it's going to do is when we walk up to an object that we can interact with, I want it to say press E to interact. And then whenever we pick the object up, I want that message to go away. Whenever we look away from the object, I also want to make sure it goes away until I look back at the object and then look away again. So we're going to go ahead and start working on the actual widget itself. And then we're just going to simply try to think of a way that we could easily control the message that gets displayed. Now, this is going to cover some basic things such as blueprint events. We're going to create one of those to fire off. And we're also going to be working with widgets so that way you can see the general idea that goes behind making a UI. Now, we're going to keep this as simple as possible. And then eventually we're going to clean it up and break it up and uh, break up the widget into the actual individual widgets. So we're going to create some widgets that we can add to other widgets and keep the functionality, but it's going to be very portable as they're going to be one single U asset. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is right click new folder in our content, and I'm just going to call it interactable. Drag our blueprint interactable there, open it up, right click user interface, widget blueprint, and I'm going to call this W underscore HUD. Now if we open that up, you can see that it's basic designer. So starting out, we have a canvas panel, and this is just kind of, think of this kind of like your basic, your base of your screen. So anything we drag and drop into here will be displayed in a one-to-one, -one, assuming our resolution is locked in a square, or not a square format, but a 16 by 9 ratio like it is right now. If it's off, it's going to be different, and so on. So we have, if you hit the, hold the uh, little arrow here, you can kind of see... You have 720p, 1080p, go to 1440, and so on if you really want to go up to 2160 or 4K. So either of these are fine. You can just leave it. It's not going to make any difference. But I want to go ahead and just leave mine here. And I want to get it so that it displays this button and this text for me in my screen. Because right now if I hit play, it's not going to appear. We just have our crosshair which we are also going to be removing here shortly. So in order to get this widget to come up, we have to create the widget, just like we would spawn an actor, for example. And then we would have to add that widget to our viewport. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go over here to our first person CPP, blueprints, and open the first person character, and go over here to the event graph. Now in the event graph, we're going to go over here to functions, override we're going to override begin play and from here this is where we're going to create our widget and add it to the viewport now normally i would do something like this inside of the player controller but we do not have one as of yet and that is something that is to be covered kind of later on in the future so whenever we actually go and get into just some very simple networking because that's really all i can think of a way to explain the player controller. So anyways, in begin play, we're going to go ahead and right click and search for create widget. Plug that in. And then we have to choose our class, which is our W underscore HUD. And then we can simply drag off the return value and add to viewport. Now, when we hit play, we see the text block and the button right there as they appear. So it's creating the widget that we just made and adding it to our viewport for us to see. So now we can make whatever changes we want. So I can delete the button and it's gone. So now we want to go ahead and set up some basic text that can be displayed. So here we have our text block. I'm going to go over here to anchors, the, uh, the anchor to the middle, position X and Y, I'm going to reset to zero. So now you can see it's got the top left corner centered right in the middle of that anchor point. And what we can do to make it in the middle is go to alignment and do 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, and that puts it directly in the center. So now what we can do really is just scale it up however we see fit. I'll leave mine as 30. Let's actually bump it up to 40. I think that's where it was. And 
let's give it a, let's give it some example text. So press E to interact. And here's the length or the width of that text. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to just double it. So we're at 60. Let's just go up to 120. That's not what I meant to do. I mean, we have 275. So let's see, 7, 14, that's another 140. Plus 5, that's another 10. So I ah, screw it. My brain. I'm not ready for this. 275 times 2. So 550. We're going to make our size on the X 550. So we're going to double the length. And then position X, we're just going to reset back to zero and it's perfectly centered. Now I'm going to take the text and I want it to be in the middle of this box. So what we can do is we can come over here to the details, go to appearance, and we will see justification. And right now it's aligned left. We can align it to the right and we can align it to the center, which I want to do. Let's go ahead and save that. Now we have to set up a way to actually interact with this text so we can change it. So the way we're going to do that is we want to make this text a variable so that way we can edit it, edit it inside of our graph. So up at the top right with the uh, text selected we can check is variable and I want to rename it to tb for text box underscore interaction message. And that's how we're going to interact with it because if we go to graph you will see this has now appeared. We now have it as a variable that we can control. I want to go ahead and as well remove the pre-construct. Actually, I'm just going to remove all of these events that come with the widget by default. And I want to set up a function that we can easily call from Blueprint to change this text. So inside a graph, I'm going to create a new function. And let's give this a function a name of set interaction text and the input is going to I think the easiest way is going to be just make it take in yeah we're going to make it actually take in a text not a string and I'm just going to call it the input text now this is very simple we just drag off our interaction message text box search for set text and that's it we can just plug it right in just like that we plug the text to text and the execution nodes together, and we can compile and save. Now if we click on set interaction text, we want to make sure that it's set to public for the XX specifier, so that way we can call it outside of this class. And now we need to actually work on figuring out a way to set this from our character, because that's where we're going to be working with it for right now. So in first person character, remember we have this return value, and this returns a reference to our HUD. So if you recall my videos where I went did a basic explanation of pointers, this is where that would kind of come into play. So this is going to pretty much be a variable or a pointer that points to this HUD widget right here. So that way we have access to it directly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually save it. So I want to go to variables, add a variable, and just call this one HUD under variable type. Search for W underscore HUD. Press enter, and we're going to make sure we select object reference. And we're going to drag it out. Press set, because we want to set this variable. And just plug it in, just like so. And then we have this little blue pin on the outside. That's the same thing. It's the HUD. And we're going to connect it to add to viewport. And delete the old line that went across. That way they're just kind of two, uh, two separate little... Two independent, or these are all independent from one another to some extent. I'm trying to, I couldn't think of what word to use. Now we can compile and save, and we have a reference to our HUD. So now, whenever we want, we can drag out our HUD. Let's do a get and search for set interaction text. And here's that function that we just made right here. So we can call it however we need to. So we need to set up a way to actually trigger this because we're going to control this from C. So this is where Blueprint events are going to come in. So that is something that we're going to actually work in the next video. But I just wanted to go ahead and get the widget set up for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a Blueprint Implementable Event on our character. And whenever we, you know, hover over a object that we can interact with, such as 
this one right here, which is our interactable object. What I want it to do is check if it implements the interface for the pickup, and if it does, I want it to display a message back to the user. So we're going to hold a string on this object here. So that string is pretty much going to be what gets passed to our character's blueprint here, our event that we're going to create. And that, from there, we're going to go to this function, and we're just going to set the text with it. So we got to make sure we convert the string to a text, and that's it. And I'd rather do that, just we're going to do that all in C++, and all we have to do is simply pass whatever text we want into that event, and it'll handle it for us. Hopefully that uh, was a decent enough explanation, and I'm kind of looking forward to getting started on it. So, if you like what I'm doing, and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description, and if you have any questions or anything like that, you can also find my Discord server down there as well. And as always, I will see you in the next video.